The Centre for Environmental Data and Recording, known as CEDAR, is the local biological record centre for Northern Ireland. It relies on the work of recorders, people passionate about wildlife and the natural world. These people record each plant or animal they see, noting what species they saw and where and when they saw it. CEDAR brings all this information together and helps distribute it to where we need it most, to researchers and to those who make critical decisions about our environment. CEDAR began its crucial work in 1995. To mark its 20th anniversary, Centre Manager Damien McFerrin talked to some of the recorders who have worked with CEDAR over the years. I first started by collecting things out of the pond and collecting butterflies when I was probably about nine or ten years old. Um, and that was really what first got me going. And because I was collecting butterflies, I was putting them, you know, pinning them out and putting them in drawers and things. But also you had to put where you found it and when you found it. So you wrote a tiny little label underneath each one and that really was the beginning of a biological record. And at that time I didn't know that people collected biological records. I knew they collected butterflies, so that made sense to me. I think the, the, the key is that when you're out, there, there's so much new stuff to learn that you, know, you want to get out and find more things and you find something you've never seen before and the naturalist in you says, what is this? I, I have to learn what this is. I have to find people who might also know what this is, who can help me to record. Um, and it just develops that experience a lot more. Well, I'm very interested in the natural world. I love the natural world, the wonder of the natural world. And there was a sense that, look, to protect it, you need good scientific data. So I was, after years and years and years of enjoying wildflowers, trees, birds, fungi, uh, then I realized, look, if I'm going to take this seriously about the micromoths, then I need to add to the scientific data. And that's what attracted me to actually recording. It's looking for things and surprises. So a lot of what I record with the lichens are going to be bread and butter species. So there's the things that we come across all the time and they're very common, but they're very useful. But also there's every now and then there's something really quite exciting and unexpected. So there's that aspect of it. And there's also a numbers aspect. It's a case of how many can I get at a particular site. Um, and then over time it's a case of how many can I get all together in terms of total numbers of records. Um, I think recording, it's the sort of thing you can do every day. It's not just a one-off where you go out two or three times a year. It's if, if you're into natural history, because no matter where you go, there's trees, there's plants, there's birds, there's the fungi, there's insects. You're never going to find an opportunity where you can't record something. So carrying a notebook in the car, you, whatever you say, you will be writing stuff down. There are a lot of people becoming interested in going out and finding what things are and recording things. And because they've now got things like the internet, Facebook and so on, they can take photographs and they can actually network together and, and learn from each other. And you get this really powerful sort of, I don't know whether you call it a peer group sort of thing going where they're all feeding in information and learning from each other. I think we've been through a period perhaps with biological records and we still are I think with some of the underwater stuff where you see records of things and you go oh no that can't possibly be true because I wouldn't have expected that thing to be in that place. Um, and so having the photography is really bringing on a whole new dimension to that because you've suddenly got the evidence. It's the same as having your specimen back in the museum collection. You've got the evidence there that somebody else can go back and check and say, oh no, that really was that really rare thing that nobody else has seen. And, and actually then once you know it's in a particular place, other people can go back and perhaps find that there's a whole population of them. Because none of these things ever is just one. It's always there's a population there. And I think what we're often trying to find is where is there a population of that rare thing?
And a lot of biological recording started off by people just trying to make atlases. So they were really trying to go around the whole of the country and record which animals or which plants were in. At that time, they did it with maps that were divided up into 10 kilometer squares. So they were really just going around checking on a sort of regular grid across the country whether or not something was in that area or whether it wasn't in that area. So it started off by trying to map things. Um, but I think now we've evolved on a lot further and we try and record things at points rather than just saying it's in a particular square because then you get some information on whether it's in a particular type of habitat or you know one field might might be different soil to the next field so if you've got point records they actually make a lot more sense and getting all those records together then starts to make some sorts of patterns on on your landscape so i think then your biological records are very important because we are seeing a world that's changing and in my lifetime has changed really quite drastically. And so we do need to have some sort of historical set of records, to, you know, that show you what those changes are. Well, I think it's a very, very valuable, very important resource for all sorts of biological data. It's a sort of central point where all that information is kept. It's really useful to have biological record centres that gather together records because the more observers you have out there, the more people you have out looking for things, the better a set of records you're going to get. One person can't record all the different groups of things, they don't know all the different species, and they can't get to all the different places. So the more you can actually have a network of people collecting records and feeding them into one centre, that gives you a much better chance of building up something that then makes a data set that you can analyse and that actually makes them some sort of sense. A natural history museum isn't just concerned with the specimens that are sitting in the drawers or in the cabinets. It's really concerned with the species, with the animals or the plants. And what we have in the museum is just a voucher, it's just a specimen but it's of that species and so we're concerned then about how it's doing out in the wild and how many of them there are and where they like to live and the whole you know gamut of biology that's species driven rather than being the sort of general principles of bio biology it's the the differences between things and why one thing lives in one place and one thing lives in another place and getting those sorts of bits of information means you've got to go back out into the field and look for the things again and start gathering these records. You don't need to gather infinite numbers of specimens into the museum, but you then need to gather the records as well that back up what you know about that species. One of the biggest things that, for me personally, is that I've got to meet so many people that I would never have known of before. Um, um, I mean, personally, if I went out into the garden and lifted a rock and found a, a little insect of some description, and I thought, I've never seen that before, I can't find it in a book. I know that if I put the picture up on Cedar or contacted the staff, they're going to be able to say, yes, we know um, such and such down the road who does this, we'll put you in contact with them. So in terms of a network of people, the, you know, it, it's an opportunity to meet so many more people than you would if you were just keeping to yourself. I think what one piece of advice I give is don't be afraid. Um, I think a lot of people maybe have the idea that natural history recording, it's very scientific. You need to have microscopes, you need to be in a lab, you need to have vast libraries of books for these things, and that's not necessarily the case. Um, you know, you can start recording something as simple as, as I've seen the birds or the animals in your back garden. You can join a group. Um, contact Cedar, there's lots of groups, um, the butterfly guys ourselves, there's um, groups on mollusks and beetles and spiders and so you can pick a little group that you might be interested in and start from scratch, don't be afraid to actually go out and learn about these things. I would say choose a group that not many other people work on. If you do that 
you very quickly become an authority on it and, and uh, an expert. And that's a, a great feeling to think, yeah, you know more than anybody else, even if you don't know a huge amount. So I would say choose a, choose a neglected group because then you can make a really big contribution potentially to the, the overall sort of recording scheme, find out what, what's living here. I think nowadays probably one of the best places for them to start would be with some of the groups there are on Facebook um, because what we're finding now is that there are lots of people with quite specific interests in butterflies or moths or something or plants perhaps where they're posting pictures up and that's actually there's a network already built there that you can get into and start to learn your identification skills when I first started I suppose there was something like the wildlife trusts would have had a few people in them that you could meet up with um, but you know that meant traveling to a particular venue and going on a particular outing I think that's still a very good way of getting into biological recording really to join a sort of specific group love what you're doing develop your interest see the wonder enjoy the wonder get out there and record